This is an intro. Don't need the intro. I don't need the intro. This is just the big... YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, own boy Josh, back at you once again, and we're closing out the year with an episode of Coil Wars Battles. Coil Wars Battles is sort of a spin off of the original Coil Wars, which pitted 10 or actually 11 builders against each other and eliminated them one by one in weekly build competitions. Now we're doing monthly build competitions, and it's open to everyone, not just those. 10 competitors that competed week after week. So our first battle has been the Corrugated Ribbon Challenge, or Ivy Wire as it's often called. Ivy Wire, as it's called, gets its namesake from Chris Farrell, or Farrell on Instagram. It was actually originally created by Omboy OC. Omboy OC, not Omboy Josh, different guy. So when Omboy OC created Zigzag Wire, no one really, ever really did anything with it. It just kind of fell by the wayside. But when Chris Farrell reimagined it into Ivy Wire and showed all these sorts of different builds that we could do with it, everyone got very excited about it once again. It was probably one of the biggest trends in building in all of 2016, if you ask me. To create ivy wire, you generally use something like this, which is basically a paper crimper. This paper crimper is a bit on the pricey side. It can be had for about $15 or so at local Hobby Lobby, or you can order it on Amazon. It's by Three Birds. There are other ones that are made of plastic that you can find probably on eBay. The plastic ones, I mean, they're plastic. They're not metal like this, but what's cool about them is that they often come with multiple different sizes and gauges for the gears that are going to crimp the wire together. So you can get some more variety in the plastic ones, which is kind of cool. Of course, when I first saw one of the original Ivy Wire builds, I fell in love with it immediately. I needed to try to make it. I didn't know how. And for months, everyone wanted to know how did people make this stuff? No one really could figure it out. Chris posted a video on his Instagram page and it was him actually crimping the wire using two screwdrivers and holding those together very, very slowly working the wire through it. And I tried it that way. And I swear, I don't know if it was a practical joke or not. To this day, I don't know. but. At least in the US, wire doesn't crimp quite the same way using the two screwdrivers. You really need a paper crimper if you ask me. Maybe it works that way in the UK where Chris is, I don't know, but it doesn't work that way here in the States, let me tell you. I still wonder if that was just a practical joke on his part, putting that out there and being like, let's watch people try and make this with screwdrivers. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, Chris Farrell is one of our judges in Coil Wars Battles today. And alongside Chris, we have Tuse, CFTP, and Ramo to you, two competitors from the first season of Coil Wars who are going to be weighing in on the builds alongside Chris today. So let's meet our contenders. First, we have All Kinds of Coils. All Kinds of Coils created a Groove Fuse Double Ivy Staggerton. To make this coil, he created a Clapton of 34 gauge over 24 gauge nichrome and laid in eight strands of 0.5 Canthal ribbon wire, four of which are corrugated. Two strands of 26 gauge nichrome make up the frames and then he fused into the Clapton with 40 gauge nichrome. All kinds of coils started vaping in July because he was tired of being out of breath all the time and smelling like crap, he says. His first mod was a Kanger Tech Top Box Mini, but he upgraded from that after about a month to an HPRIV. One of his buddies at work was telling him that he should start making his own coils because it's cheaper. He's pretty sure he was just talking about wrapping some 24 gauge, but he stumbled across some advanced coil builds and coil wars and decided to give it a shot. So within the next week, he went out and bought a drill and swivels and ordered a bunch of wire and just got into it. His first build was a pair of Fuse Claptons, and after that single pair, he was just kind of like, all right, I've got the Clapton down. Let's try an alien. <laughs> he wasted a few hundred feet of wire on that and had his first pair of aliens the next day. Wow. Then it was all downhill from there. He started off posting and learning from a page on Facebook, Coil Building 18 known over, and after a few months decided to make an Instagram account. Wow. One day to learn to make an alien coil? That's amazing, dude. That's just amazing. And I'm so glad that you found Coil Wars and you found a bunch of other builders to help inspire you. Sounds like you're, you're off and running already. If 
only from July. Wow, that's amazing. This is that that's amazing. Just amazing. I had no idea. Beautiful color on this build as well. I love the purples and blues that came out of this build from all kinds of coils. Really nice work, man. Bad MF Mike. Bad motherfucking Mike is back again. A veteran from Coil Wars Season 1. He created a parallel zigzag build with a crimped floater, or as Raymo to you likes to call it, a Groove Mitchell Special. Mike used three strands of 0.5 stainless steel, crimped them together, and used two strands of 26 gauge nichrome frames with a bit of 38 gauge nichrome to bind this build together. Bad motherfucking Mike would like to add that since Coil Wars, he's joined up with a few builders and become co-captain of the build team, Band of Builders. He's quite happy to be on a team with guys from all over the world who work together to become better at what they do. He's also happy to announce that Clouds on Wheels will be kicking off their second cloud competition in the very near future. Clouds on Wheels is a competition for mobility challenge vapors. And he says he almost forgot mom is doing fine and says hi. Hi mom. <laughs> I love this build because the way that the corrugated wire is sort of anchored to the frames and then there's this one floating corrugated wire down the middle. It's really interesting the way that that was done. I really dig that. And it's inspired by this another builder by the name of Gro Grove Mitchell on Instagram. And it's a very, very interesting style. I dig it, man. Excel Coils created a hybrid corrugated staple. I don't have the specs here, so I'm, I'll fail miserably, but I'll do my best. <laughs> The cores on this hybrid are 10 strands of ribbon wire, sandwiching in another stack of two ribbon wire strands that have been clapped in over in, I would guess, 40 gauge or higher. I'd guess the ribbon is 0.4 or 0.5, a mix of nichrome and canthal based on the coloring, and that's all been framed in either side and I would guess 26 gauge canthal. Over these cores and frames, he's fused them together in three different styles create his hybrid coil. In the middle, he's got a bit of an alien wrapped ribbon wire that's fused over the cores. Out from there, he's got an interlocking stitched Enigma alien. I think that's called a hedgehog. I don't really remember. And out from there, a staggered stapled fuse Clapton, and he has it mounted all up in the Pharaoh. XL coils started vaping close to two and a half years ago. He started off on something small, but it didn't work, and then he moved on to bigger mods and rebuildables, which were much more effective for helping him to quit tobacco cigarettes. He's been building for about two years, and he really got into the art aspect a little over a year ago. He's 31, lives in Buffalo, New York, and he's had a troubled past, he says. He uses coil building as an escape to get away from all the things that get him into trouble. He loves coil building for the aspects involved, meeting great people in the scene, helping other people out, the challenge of it, and going head to head against other builders, and just having fun with learning all the various techniques and making unique coils from there. He's on the team Building Brothers and loves being on such a good team with great members. He says that vaping saved his life. He says he's always looking to come up with ideas for coils that have never been seen before. He has a prototype in the works right now, but it's being quite troublesome, he says. He says that with a bit more luck, he'll have some new coil designs released that have never been done before. You know me, I love a good hybrid coil, man. They are my all-time favorite coils to make because there's no limit to them. Everything that's a regular coil you can do is a hybrid coil. You can just combine so many different build styles into one particular build. Watch, uh, you're an inspiration, man. I love hybrids, man, it's the best. Handmade Coil created a parabolic pitchfork variant. No specs here again, so I will do my best. There are a total of 14 strands of vertically stacked ribbon wire and two strands of corrugated horizontally wrapped ribbon that make up the cores. The frames are, I would say, 26 gauge, and the pitchforks and fuse are, I would say, 38 or 40. Mike, Mike, make? I'm not sure how to say it, is Handmade Coil. He is 42 years old and he works as a nurse. He's a married father of three girls. He says the hobby of coil building, he's been doing it for six months now. And he says all the best in the new year. I love how these corrugated wraps, they're just kind of offset in such a way that they just create such an interesting light on this coil. And the colors on the fuse are just ridiculous. You've got reds and golds and blues and purples and more reds. I mean, it's just a gorgeous build. And it looks beautiful all mounted up in the Pharaoh with these three wraps here. It's a gorgeous build. Chaos Heisen created a corrugated staggered fuse staple. Two strands of 30 gauge canthal make up the frames, eight strands of 0.3 ribbon wire for the cores, and the two most center strands are crimped. 
There is a 36 gauge stainless steel staggered Clapton over the frames and a 40 gauge stainless steel fuse in between those gaps. It ohms out at about 0.23 ohms and he's mounted it up in my all time fave, the Aeronaut. Chaos Heisen is Carlo Heisen and he's 32 years old. He's been smoking since he was 14 years old. Just a couple of sticks here and there until it became a pack or two eventually. Up until December of 2015, he honestly thought that vaping was douchey <laughs> and would tease his friends about it. His cough got really bad during those times and uh, that where it would sometimes send him to the floor. His first device was a subvod because he said to himself that there's no need of him learning Ohm's Law, he'll never be building his own coils. And from there he went to a top tank mini and there were times he would get dud OCC coils. You know, everyone's gotten those coils that just don't work sometimes. And from there, he learned how to build and it just snowballed from there. He's pretty happy because he doesn't feel the shortness of breath anymore. And he could even do cardio workouts without dying. He says that now he can play with his children more and he's even gotten into a new hobby because of vaping. He says he's met a lot of cool people, especially through building and it's even helped to replace his alcoholism. I love how the corrugated ribbon is just so slightly corrugated. It's just like a slight angle to the corrugation. It just kind of flows down there. It creates these very, very tiny gaps on either side of the corrugations. And it not only is it an interesting look, but it's going to create some nice pockets for the juice to collect. And it's not so deep pockets, wide pockets, that juice is just gonna fall right through. Juice is going to get stuck in those pockets. You can just tell looking at it. And the color too, of course the color. How the ribbon strands have stayed just kind of a solid metal sort of finish, but the frames, just a rainbow. I mean, you've got golds and reds and blues and purples. It's just a beautiful build. And of course, I mean, you know me, I love the Aeronaut. <laughs> Before we declare our winner, I want to take a look at the Coil Wars page because this was a close, close battle. Not just between our five competitors that made it this far to the judging panel, but on the entirety of the Instagram page, the Coil Wars page. This was close. In some cases, only one vote stood between the entrants that made it this far to the judging panel and those that didn't. It was close, guys. Super close. Here's where it all started. Seven weeks ago, we announced this battle, which was immediately following the original Coil Wars season one finale. Scrolling on up here, you can see Handmade Coil was one of the first to submit their build. And then on up from here, we had a number of competitors that submitted more than one entry. You can see early entries from Chaos Heisen, all kinds of coils. 1337 Coil X. This build is nuts, man. This is an alien wrap over this corrugated frame. Gorgeous, man. I love this hybrid coil that all kinds of coils submitted as well. And this thing is gorgeous. And I love a good hybrid. From here, we have I Am Mr. Nothing. This was one of my favorite builds that was submitted, to be honest with you. I love this build. I love it because it harkens back to Farrell's original concept, his original Ivy Wire build, but it's been sort of clapped in all over and mounted in the goon and mounted horizontally, which is something that I haven't seen from that build before. I've never seen that mounted horizontally. I love that build. We have some early entries from Bad MF Mike. He contributed a number of builds to the Coil Wars page. We have Steve Oberg here with this nice little series. That is five wraps in the Pharaoh. That is a big, big, big coil, man. Beautiful, nice stagger work here as well. And a nice corrugation underneath. Corrugation, I think I just invented a word. This nice color shot from Steve Oberg as well. This entry from Spaced Coils, one of the former judges of Coil Wars. Love that he decided to contribute as well. Love this build. This is his corrugated radiator stovetop coil, which is his original concept. A very, very interesting build. He was a judge back on the stovetop entries. This beautiful shot from Posey Wan. I love this shot, man. It's the darks, the, the grays and the darks and the metal. I, I just love it. I love the lighting. I love everything about this shot. Not just the coil, it's just a beautiful image. Beautiful. This entry from Toxic Drummer with the corrugation that's been sort of fused over between the frames. Just beautiful. I love how these kinds of coils color up and the way that the light catches them. They make for really interesting looking builds. I've made a build like this and I thought to myself, why would I want to cover up the corrugated ribbon? Well, you know what? The way the light hits a build like this, and where you see the corrugated ribbon underneath that fuse, just beautiful. I love builds like that. See that? Look at that. Look at that, how that coil colored up. Just gorgeous. Just beautiful. 
it's like just this iridescent sort of glow that emits from this particular kind of build. I love the way these coils come out. It's gorgeous. Man, this build from Rap God with this naked staple. Man, I've tried a naked staple before and it has not come out anywhere nearly as good as that. That thing is clean. You can see where the fused wraps are still on the legs down over here. You can see where they're not completely stripped off showing the work that goes into this coil. It's not just building it, then you've got to strip it bare. Some more from all kinds of coils and bad motherfucking Mike there. Another one from Posey Wan. This thing is just beautiful. This staple staggered fuse coil. Clapton. I love these. These are just gorgeous where the frames are actually ribbon wire as well that have been sort of staggered over. Really, really cool looking build, man. And there's the uh, rest of that build from Space Coils. This thing is just super interesting. Corrugated ribbon wire sort of net that goes over everything. This is this radiator stovetop. Just such an interesting coil. Another one from Bad Motherfucking Mike. Another one from Handmade Coil. More from Toxic Drummer. This is a Tiger. This is a Tiger Helix coil. This thing is awesome looking. Three strands of ribbon wire spun together to make up a Tiger coil, and then it's helixed over to make this sort of framed corrugated staple. Very, very cool. Jitta's Vapes has a few in here. Nice wire shots from Jitta's Vapes over here. Nice frame staple, it's a half frame staple actually. You got the frame over here, which is straight round wire, and you've got a staple over here, which makes up the other frame. And then you've got the corrugated ribbon down the middle. Very cool. Another one from Rap God, similar build to the one that Jitta's Vapes submitted, but all wrapped up together and mounted in the goon. Makes for a beautiful looking build, man. Half staggered staple with that ribbon wire runner down the middle. I love it. This one from Ohm Grinder, I don't think he quite finished it, but it looks like it would have been a really beautiful build, man. This one from Sec Seca CW. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. But this is actually not technically a corrugated ribbon wire build, but he built it in the spirit of Ivy wire, which I thought was really cool. He says, I know this is not a true Ivy corrugated coil, but it's done in the spirit and I hope it's included. I gotta say, I see it here. I see how this sort of twist and this braid and the way that it's sort of woven together, it definitely sort of harkens to Ivy wire. It lends itself to that and it's influenced and inspired by that. And I thought that was really cool. I thought it was a really interesting build to include. And there it is all mounted up in the avocado. I see a lot of goons and I see a lot of pharaohs. <laughs> Matu Vape with this blue goon teeth. Love this build. It's just so clean is what it is. Just so clean. It just really pops with that blue deck. Looks gorgeous, man. What is going on here, Jitta's Vapes? This is a groove fused frame staple with a corrugated runner and a staple runner. This thing's crazy looking. Dripping Skulls. This build reminded me a lot of the builds that TUs was submitting throughout Coil Wars. And I just, I love those builds. I love this build too. Oh, this one from all kinds of coils is crazy. It is a successful, you can see it's successful because it's lighting up right, a successful uh, altar bridge build. You can see that successful because the bridge isn't lighting up at all really, and only the coils are lighting up and it just came out gorgeous, man. Very, very cool. He likes to call it his butterfly build. <laughs> There's this series from Heathen CKS. I love these beefy, beefy sort of, you know, frames here and the nice color that's coming out of the corrugated ribbon and the nice color that's coming out of the wire itself, uh, the fuse itself. It just looks very, very beefy on the cores and on the, uh, the fuse. It's really cool, cool looking coil. We have this Suka build from th from Bulldog Vapes. I like that, the 13 is the B, very cool. Uh, Bulldog Vapes has this Suka corrugated staple mounted up in the goon, beautiful build. We got this interlocking alien wrap from DNB Vapor over this corrugated staple. He's got four strands of ribbon wire down the middle and the corrugated ribbon on either side of it. And then another couple of pieces of straight ribbon wire there and then the frames and then fused over with an interlocking alien. And you can tell that that's gonna be super, super flavorful too because of all the gaps and all the ridges and all the sort of little intricacies that are in that coil where juice can get captured. You can tell it's gonna vape awesome. Whoa, super macro from Posey One. Beautiful shot, man. The coil is beautiful too, but the shot is just gorgeous. And honestly, I saw this build from O Fish Tackle and I don't know if it's technically a corrugated ribbon wire or what it is. I think it's actually a stitched alien 
that's been flattened, but it just kind of fit in my head for some reason. It looks like chain mail. The wire shot on this build from Harlequin is beautiful. What's interesting here is that the corrugated wire is actually not ribbon. It's round wire by the look of it, but he has staples on the sides. So it's not for lack of ribbon wire, but the choice he's made to go ahead and use round wire. I love this build from Mr. Baboon over here because of the colors. The colors are just so well done. He's used probably stainless steel wire by the look of it. Yes, stainless steel wire. And he's gotten some golds and reds out of the stagger and the fuse. And he's got a bit of a gold on the uh, corrugated ribbon wire down the middle while leaving the four strands of staggered ribbon wire on either side of that corrugated wrap without any color by using canthal. It's just very, well imagined, very good use of wire and color there. Love it. Another one from Rap God, and this is just this beast of a suka coil. Yeah, Diamondback suka is what you call this thing, if I'm not mistaken. Came out gorgeous, man, just gorgeous. And then we have this entry from a Coil Wars Season 1 veteran, N Divine 83 VBC. And this is what Raymo to you is talking about, how it's inspired by this builder by the name of Grove Mitchell. This is similar in style to his builds here. And this is another entry from all kinds of coils. This is a double Razorback alien over a corrugated ribbon stack that's been framed in uh, two round wire cores as well and stitched. This thing is nuts, man. Razorbacks are insane. Insane. That's one thing that I want to learn to do. I love this helix wrapped corrugated staple from Papa Coils over here. He's spread it apart and sort of bowed it between the two posts on this deck. Gorgeous, man. There's an entry from Chaos Heisen. We've got another one from Rap God, a binary build. I love that with the corrugated runner down the middle between the staple cores. That is just awesome looking. More from Bad Motherfucking Mike, more from Jittus Vapes. Another one from Handmade Coil, Bulldog Vapes. More from All Kinds of Coils. Here's one from Just a Coil. Only five strands of ribbon wire here and a deep, deep curve on those corrugated ribbon. It just kind of sweeps along in between those two vertically stacked ribbon cores. Just a very, very chill build. Love it, man. Yeah, there's Skids Apart showing his wares from season one. Congratulations again, buddy. We got Vape Daddy Customs in here. I love the deep curve on the corrugated wrap here and the roundedness to it. That's what I'm saying, like this thing is cool and all. I like this because it's really well made, this particular paper crimper, but there's ones where you can just get a variety of different kinds of crimpers all together and you can really you know, experiment with the wire a bit more. So mm, I like that thing, I do, but I really like the plastic ones too. And here's one from Damn Devil. Damn Devil who created a double helix wrapped corrugated staple very cool build. I love how the helix wrap, it's just helix is going this way and helix is going this way and how they crisscross. It just creates a super unique look and it's going to create a crazy flavorful vape as well. It's beautiful wire, man. So some amazing entries in the Instagram page right there and elevated up to the panel. We had some excellent competitors, but there were some really amazing people just on the Instagram page itself. So I want to thank everyone once again for submitting those builds and just keep them coming because we're going to have a, a whole nother challenge next month. More on that soon. Once again, I'd like to thank Farrell, TUCFTP, and Ramo to you for weighing in and helping us to declare a winner in Quail Wars Battles. This has been a, a fun ride getting here from uh, you know the announcement of the corrugated battle on up to the video. And I need to take a minute because I need to tally up the scores. I haven't even done that yet because I kind of wanted to be surprised. I was pretty excited. Farrell himself wanted to say that competition has been fierce. Participants came out crimpers loaded and drills blazing for this episode of Coil Wars. So many incredible builds. Amazing how much innovation happened in 2016. And congratulations to everyone involved. He wants to wish everyone good health, happiness, and plenty of adventure in the new year. The winner for this edition of Coil Wars Battles is none other than XL Coils with his corrugated staple hybrid. Congratulations, XL Coils. Our next challenge for the months of January and the winner being announced late January, early February is going to be the Helix Coil. 
Yes, so I'm glad that we did take the time to go through the entries that didn't quite make it up to the judging panel because some of those entries were Helix style builds, many of them staple Helix. Now, the staple Helix is just one variation of the Helix coil and I'm hoping to put one together for you guys not too, too far down the line. But what I've decided to put together for you guys today is more of a standard Helix coil just to show the, the, var the variations and helixes that you can do because there's limitless possibilities with the helix. You can combine all kinds of wires, twist them together, and then helix into those gaps in the wires. And then you add you know, staple elements to it and helix those together and it just gets even more endless. But we're gonna start with just the single strand helix. So what I put together is an alien staple tiger helix coil. I started out by creating the Clapton of 40 gauge over 28 gauge. I decided to try something a bit different with this build. Yeah, for months, Dwayne has been telling me that I've been using the wrong hand when I've been making my builds. Like I'm actually been building like goofy footed, you know, building with my right hand rather than my left hand with the drill anyway. And I have to tell you, it is game changer using my right hand to hold the fused or Claptoning wire. It's so much easier. So I don't know why I waited so long to give Dwayne's advice a try and use the proper hands to build, but I have to tell you, it, it makes a difference. So if you're like me and you've been building with the wrong hand for this long, try switching it up. <laughs> kind of amazing. The key to claptoning is to focus on the angle. You wanna use right angles when you're claptoning wire or fusing wire. Either one, fused Clapton, regular Clapton, it's all about right angles. You're looking at the wire that you're fusing onto these cores and you're looking for a 90 degree angle at the core wire on either side. You don't want it to be angled this way and definitely not angled this way or it'll back up on you. Angle it this way and it'll give too much of a gap between those Clapton wraps. You want a perfect 90 degree angle the whole way down the strand. Just focus on that, forget the cores, it'll be just fine if you're still learning how to Clapton. Clapton made, I decored that and stretched it across the room, locking it into the vise. The key to stretching out the Clapton wire when you're prepping an alien is to go by feel, if you ask me. Especially with something this tiny, like 40 gauge. I mean, 40 gauge, you can hardly see it while you're stretching it across the room. Forget 42 gauge or 48 gauge or whatever you crazy kids are using these days. 40 gauge, you really have to go by feel. Well, the moment you feel like a bit of a kick, like it's just a, a slight bit too tight, that's when you need to stop stretching it. For me, I'm fortunate. The space between this part of my table and the other end of the room is kind of like the perfect length of room for stretching out a bit of wire when I've originally clapped it onto a strand three times off the spool, which is generally how I measure it. From there, I took a strand of 0.8 canthal ribbon, about as far as I could stretch my two arms off the spool, and I folded that in half over a set of swivels. Mounted that all in the vise, and I alien fused over them. Again, the angle is key here. The angle is key when you're alien fusing a bit of wire. You wanna focus on the angle rather than the cores and fuse with your dominant hand. Most definitely fuse with your dominant hand. Thank you, Mr. Rambo. My alien ribbon wire complete, and this is about two feet of alien ribbon wire uh, that I've put together here. I combine that with the 28 gauge that I put the 40 gauge Clapton over in the original step of making the alien wire, because why waste it? And I twisted them together. And with that, I made a alien staple tiger. Now the helix, first I helix into the gaps created by the 28 gauge with 34 gauge stainless steel. First one side and then the other side of that twisted wrap. The angle is important here as well. Angling the helix wire in such a way that it falls into the gaps and just letting the spin of the drill do the work for you is what I've found the easiest way to do it. Find the right angle to match up to the angle where you've twisted these wires together and then just spin it out. Let the wire do the work for you and just hold the wire there as it's being spun into place. That's all there is to it with the helix like this. But I didn't stop there. I decided to take a strand of 40 gauge, fold it in half and helix over the alien wrap itself, segmenting it in half. 
The way that the alien kind of bends to accommodate the twist of the 28 gauge creates a sort of curve to the ribbon and the alien sort of track that's perfect for accommodating a helix wrap. It laid in there, no problem. And when it was done, I had a triple helix over that tiger coil or quad helix, however you want to look at it. I had enough wire for three coils wrapped around a three millimeter internal diameter. And so I chose to mount it all up in the Triad Genesis RTA from his modus. I used the three millimeter bit from the coil master kit both to wrap the coil and to position it over the wicking holes while I anchored the leads into the post holes. From there, I gave everything a wash and started going to work, getting everything blown upright. Helix builds are very, very flavorful. The standard sort of Helix build that I'm showing you here, the single wire Helix, vapes awesome. They vape like twisted builds, but with a little bit more elegance to them. Um, they're very much for looks at this kind of building. If you ask me, there's different sort of Helix style wraps that you could use between the gaps here. Like I could have twisted those two strands of 40 gauge together. I could have made it three strands of 40 gauge and twisted them together over the alien wrap. I could have made, you know, micro Clapton's and helixed in with those. Those may have added some more flavor definition to the build if you ask me. Now this build, it's delicious. I mean, it's three coils in here of this Helix wrap and it vapes beautifully in the Triad RTA, I have to tell you. I think Helixing over the Alien wrap with those two strands of 40 gauge was a good choice, not just for aesthetics, but for adding this additional track, this additional bit of wire with which will trap more juice and feed even more juice to that Alien wrap. It's a, it's a really yummy, yummy build, I have to tell you.
very cloudy, very flavorful. And I vape it at about 125 watts or so, 120 watts or so. It's at 122 right now, actually. It's a 0.14 ohm build. All three coils in here, five wraps, three millimeter internal diameter. It's delicious. But anyway, Happy New Year, guys. And that's 2016, guys. We're closing it out with another episode of Coil Wars Battles. It's been awesome. It's been an awesome year. As Farrell said, a ton of innovation this year, not just in vaping as a whole, but also in building. Uh, it's, it's been wild, and it's been a lot of fun. And uh, Coil Wars has been definitely the highlight of the year for me. It's been a lot of fun doing that with you guys. That and the green screen reviews, but Coil Wars. Yeah, Coil Wars, green screen reviews. I don't know, I think Coil Wars takes the cake. And uh, that's definitely how I want it to close out 2016. It's been a lot of fun, guys. And uh, I'll see you guys in 2017 with our Helix Challenge. See you guys then. Until next time, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Vape on, vapors.